Hello and welcome to your news and features electronic magazine that centers on the different facets of motoring. Now in its 34th year, this is Motoring Today. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall have the DOTR's EDSA Busway Project. Our road safety reminder on the Young Street Smarts portion centers on the right-of-way of vehicles turning right. This week's buying to bear shall be about respecting pedestrians. The public service segment centers on the reaction to motorcycle riders using the exclusive bicycle lanes. Showcase this week shall have the compact sedan from Volkswagen and 2019 Le Mando Comfort Line. While for Race Weekend, we'll look back on our exclusive interview with Lube's Traders Ultra Racing Team of Paulo Santos, Gabby Gonzalez, and Andre Tan. All these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are in this week's edition of Motor in Today. Join us! Part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now! What do we go for? We go for experience! We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Over the past weekend, the Interagency Task Force on COVID-19 has announced that private use of motorcycle units with back riders will soon be allowed. At the start of the community quarantine period in the country, all forms of transportation were prohibited. When quarantine restrictions were eased, the national government slowly allowed the resumption of public transport but disallowed back riders on motorcycle units. Many have disagreed on this, but the national government remained firm on its decision. Entering the fourth week of general community quarantine in Metro Manila, the IATF has reached a decision to allow back riders on the road again, compliant to guidelines that will be set by concerned agencies. These are the DOTR, the MMDA, the Department of Health, the Department of Science and Technology, and the Department of Trade and Industry. These agencies will determine the safest and most effective way of reducing the risk of transmission in motorcycle back riding. The DOTR, however, clarifies that the IATF is only allowing back riding for private motorcycle units and not with motorcycle ride hailing apps like Ancas, Joyride, and Move It. The department also stressed that the pilot study of motorcycle taxis has already expired last April and the recommendations were already submitted to the House of Representatives. As of the moment, the DOTR said that they are awaiting the Congress action regarding the operation and legalization of motorcycle taxis as a mode of transportation. <music> Meanwhile,
Meanwhile, the LTFRB has allowed the operation of modern Jeeps that have complied with the requirements set by the Omnibus Franchising Guidelines. These units now ply identified routes across Metro Manila. The DOTR has released a gradual and phased approach on the resumption of public transportation in the Metro under general community quarantine rules. The first phase ran from June 1 to 21, where trains, taxis, transport network vehicle service units, shuttle services, point-to-point -point buses, and tricycles were allowed to operate. For the second phase, the government will allow public utility buses, modern PUVs, and UV Express shuttles back in operation starting June 22. In line with this, an initial number of 308 modern jeepney units are back on the road, plying 15 different routes in the metro. We have divided it all accordingly. So we have set A. These are comprised of 15 routes with 308 units all. On June 24, the LTFRB opened nine more routes and another 10 on June 26 to serve other parts of Metro Manila that are adjacent to provinces. The LTFRB stressed that strict health protocols are being enforced to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Along with these are other requirements such as the use of cashless payment options and units must be equipped with Global Navigation Satellite System or Global Positioning System. The modern Jeeps must also be currently registered and with valid personal passenger insurance policies. Existing fare matrix must also be displayed inside the unit. And finally, once modern Jeeps have been fully deployed, UV Express shuttles will soon ply on the road as part of the Transport Department's phased resumption of public transportation. A technical working group composed of representatives from the DOTR and the LTFRB is currently finalizing proposed guidelines prior to the resumption of UV Express shuttles operation in NCR. According to LTFRB Chairman Martin Delger III, they are being extra careful in crafting the guidelines to balance the agency's mandate to provide transportation needs while also being responsible in helping prevent the spread of COVID-19. In this way, the LTFRB also observes its gradual and calculated approach for the resumption of public transportation. The resumption of uh, public transport is premised on the suspension of public transport since uh, the time when the there was that presidential uh, proclamation on the suspension of public transport in the midst of the pandemic as early as uh, March 12. And so, yung pagbabalik ng ating mga pampublikong sasakyan sa daan, hinay-hinay. And this is uh, in line with the policy of the Department of Transportation that the resumption of public transport will be calibrated, partial, and in phases. The LTFRB has initially allowed the operations of modern Jeeps and stressed that they are working double time to soon implement operations of public utility buses and UV Express shuttles as part of the DOTR's mass transport plan. The LTFRB assures UV Express drivers and operators that they can resume trips and get back to business before the month ends. Those are the latest news in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Modern Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The transformation of ETSA has been talked about by transport agencies for quite some time now. This fired up again as the usual parking lot like ETSA was left with little to no cars during the community quarantine period. As we move to the new normal, the DOTR and the MNDA have presented plans and proposals for the new ETSA leading to new discussions and arguments. Over time, the MMDA has been coming up with plans and schemes that will help decongest traffic on EDSA. Some were accepted, but most of them were highly criticized and openly defined. Some of these were traffic schemes, establishment of yellow lane, motorcycle lane, high occupancy vehicle lane, even narrowing of EDSA's lanes, driver only ban, and the list goes on. At present, the DOTR and the MMDA are working together to transform EDSA into a more commuter-friendly thoroughfare. Part of the DOTR's plans in the transformation of this major metro highway is the introduction of the EDSA Busway Project, a takeoff from the long-proposed Bus Rapid Transit System. The bus median lane, now being implemented on EDSA, has been proven to be one of the most effective mass transport systems in the world, according to the agency. 
In adopting this, the DOTR said that the safety of commuters will be its priority, and this can be achieved through the establishment of designated bus stops in strategic locations and accessible crossings and pathways. The latter will be complementary to the existing MRT3 stations, making it easier for PWDs and senior citizens to access. The Transport Department has also pointed out the effects and benefits of the EDSA busway project to commuters, seamless movement of high-capacity PUVs, faster travel time for commuters, at great pedestrian crossings and or footbridges, special lifters that will be made available for PWDs and senior citizens, among others. The DOTR said that they are actively engaging with road transport experts, commuter groups, economists, and community leaders to make this plan a reality and eradicate decades of car-centered policies that have clogged roads and oppressed majority of the public who commute to work. Other than this, the DOTR stressed that they are looking forward to putting in place a modern road transport system that reflects the needs of the present and is geared towards being able to anticipate the future. The department, however, is not free from criticism and disagreement, but the agency bravely calls them out to join the quest for better mobility and hear their sights, insights, concerns, and recommendations. With the threat of the coronavirus still looming, the DOTR calls on everyone to break barriers and join hands as we heal as one. DOTR's EDSA Busway Project. Its strong points of criticisms are featured this week on Motoring Today's Motoring Forum, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. here on Motoring Today. In line with our lifelong commitment to promote road safety, here is this week's road safety tip in cooperation with Toyota Motor Philippines. If you are stopped at an intersection, paunahin ang sasakyan na nasa kanan dahil ito ay may right of way. It is important to keep this in mind for smooth travel. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. From Mitsubishi Motors Philippines, here is Fine Chuper this week. Fine Chuper lang, kaibigan. Ako po si Ka Jojo Martin, isang kapo nyo, Chuper. Bigyang prioridad ang mga pedestrian. Matutong magbigay daan sa mga tumatawid na pedestrian, lalo na sa mga bata at matatanda. Humigil sandali at huwag magmadali. Maging mapagpasensya upang makaiwas na rin sa disgrasya. Siguraduhin na buo ang iyong atensyon sa pagmamaneho at sa lahat ng nasa paligid mo. Bukod sa iyong mga pasahero, huwag rin kalimutang irespeto ang mga tao sa labas ng sasakyan. Ito po si Ka Jojo Martin, payong chopper lang kaibigan, mula sa isang kapo niyo chopper. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. 
Be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. On Motor Today, World of Motor Sports is next. We start with the latest news and developments. Newly founded Porsche Esports team has won the GTE class of the virtual 24 hours of Lima first edition. The digital version of the 2017 spec 911 RSR took the flag in first place in the hands of works driver Nick Tandy and Porsche Jr. Ian Can Govan as well as the professional sim racers Josh Rogers and Tommy Otsgaard. In the GTE class, they crossed the finish line after a flawless marathon sprint twice around the clock with a one-lap lead over the second-placed crew. Exactly 50 years after Porsche's first overall victory at the Real Classic, the quartet now adds to the success of Hans Hermann and Richard Atwood. Porsche tackled the digital event with four virtual 911 RSR. Each car was crewed by two real racing drivers and two esports professionals from Koanda Sim Racing Team. From the very beginning, the driver crew of number 93 car proved particularly competitive after a strong start for Dempsey Proton's number 88 Porsche 911 RSR, Tandy, the 2015 Lima overall winner handed the car off to Osgard after a good 4 hours. They swept into the lead. Putting in a remarkable steady drive, both Gove and Rogers extended their lead and not even two pit stops due to technical problems could halt their charge. At around 6.15 a.m., with the rising sun, 20-year-old Rogers also turned the fastest race lap in the GTE class in 348.203. More on the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today as we look back on the highlights of this year's local motorsports on Race Weekend. Right before the supposed start of the 2020 GT racing season, we featured the young guns of the team Big Chill. We found out about the team, how it started, and more about the up-and-coming stars of local more sports being nurtured by the team. It's still more than a couple of months away but many racers and teams are already preparing for the 2020 Philippine GT Championship. Blue Stratus Shell Helix Ultra Racing Team, also known as the Team Big Chill, is among teams already shaking down cars to be entered in this year's Philippine GT, which flags off with its first leg on May 30-31 to at the Batangas Racing Circuit. The team is betting on young racers, Paulo Santos, Gabby De Sales, and Andre Tang to banner its championship run this year. Race Weekend talks to the young guns of Team Big Chill to learn about the team, how they got into racing, and their preparations for the 2020 GT season. First off, how did Team Big Chill come about? According to Paolo, the team started out as just a barcada who liked the distress after racing events with the help of some spirits. Um, team Big Chill started with uh, Tito Ding, Tito Peewee. Tito Ding is the head mechanic for the cars, including Tito Docs. Team Big Chill is basically every after race, magi inuman sila. So that's what the Big Chill is for. Like they really drink beer after a race. So ever since, even when we were, when I wasn't even racing, when I didn't know Sina Tito Peewee, uh, that's <coughs> that that was their team. Later on, the racing became more than just weekend adrenaline adventures and the chilling after races. Sponsorships were acquired and young drivers were recruited to beef up the team. Apparently with a sponsorship came the need to recruit talented young drivers. I started 2018 but I was 
I started driving with them with Stefan Rivera and Gabby the same year. For endurance, which we joined, I think, FM3 for like 100 horsepower or less, which was Paulo's GT100 car before. Yeah, similar to um, how Andre started also, we started in 2018 for the endurance race and then I completed the whole season as well um, under Team Shell for Forest. Before Team Big Chill, how did the three young guns get into racing? And who influenced them to try motorsports? I started racing four years ago in the motorsports development program. Then a year after that, I went into slalom racing in Phoenix National Slalom. After that, I went into circuit racing naman in Flat Out Race Series. And then I continued slalom alongside um, racing in um, AAGC in Indonesia and in Taiwan. My biggest influencer in motorsport is my Tito Mark. Shout out to Tito Mark de Sales because he was the one who influenced me to start racing and guided me along the way. So I started racing in the Flat Out Race Series, I think four years ago, or three years ago, I think 2017, first, first full season ago. From there, I just continued racing in fours, and then we started joining Endurance with the Shell team, and then joined GT last year, and then here this year. But on that goal, he's my biggest influencer to start racing this. Because he gave me a Civic, then first time na uh, medyo nag, nag, ako nag-initiate na pwede ba ako sumali mo guys? So may ako sige pwede naman. Nag-direct-direct siya. Oh, I started racing five years ago, a year before Andre, yeah. Started in slalom, then autocross for the first two years. And then we went to force at the same time, me and Andre. At that time, I was a grid D, so I, I was overall champion for grid D. And then a, a year after that, I went to GT200. My biggest influencer was Tito P.V. Menjola. Since, since I was a kid, he was, um, I guess my dad would bring me to the races. It would just be in parking lots for slalom nearby. He'd let me ride with him. And ever since, I guess Tito P.V. was the one, he was actually the one who influ influenced my dad to race. So, I was able to do it. The young guns soon experienced the advantages of racing for an established team, but this comes with an added pressure to perform. With having a team back us up for every race weekend, I think it, it takes off a lot from our shoulders. At the same time, putting on a lot of weight back. Because uh, there's pressure to perform. Of course, we want to put on a good show, and then we always have to act accordingly. Because we're carrying their name, it's not just ours. So it, it's nice to get the financial support. It's nice to get, at least for me and Paolo, the free ride, pretty much. And then uh, it's nice that we get support from the Titos and the, the ones who have more experience than us. In last year's GT Championship, Paolo and Andre competed in the same class. The teammates were encouraged to always race to win and score points for themselves and the team. Oh, it was up and down because so many stuff were happening. I guess like there were there were races where I'd be last because of uh, like problems in the setup and also like um, the tires and everything with my brakes. I think the season it, it went as well at, as it could have because we, yeah, we we did face a lot of challenges <clears throat> in the start first half of the season. I didn't have any problems with the car. It's just me getting used to. Um, the 200 horsepower and then the um, a bit heavier car compared to what I was used to and then also the grippier tires because I never I didn't really use grippy tires before nagaya yung car ko sa may nagkaroon ng issue with Paolo's car it, I mean same issue with Paolo's car yung brakes yeah and the brakes and then it happened out of the blue so there's nothing we could do to save that car Gabby wasn't as active in racing last year, taking a long break from competition to concentrate on her studies. I focused on my studies because I was a graduating student. So I just graduated last year. So that whole year, um, I stopped racing. And then, um, pasulpot-sulpot na lang yung, yung pag-race ko sa circuit. But I also entered into international racing for Jim Gana. Gabby will be competing in the GT100 class and is determined to do well in the coming season with support from her teammates. Actually, my motivation has been my teammates because they're the ones who always tell me, 
always guide me on how to improve myself, how to improve my runs. So I always take um, criticisms openly because I'm very open to feedback and um, I want to prove myself to them that even if um, I'm, a, I'm a female in a male-dominated sport, I can always do better. This early, the team is deep into preparations for the coming season, shaking down their cars, fine-tuning setups, getting themselves fit to race a complete season. Since the last shakedown, um, we're still trying to figure out how we can modify the car better because I'm still trying to build my relationship with the car, so I'm still getting to know the car better because I haven't raced it for a whole season yet. So I've only tried it out per circuit twice. Pa lang. So um, definitely need more track time, so we'll work on that before the season starts. For me, because it, it's hard to gauge what we're doing at the new progress from last year because we have a whole new chassis for, at least for me, for the yellow car. But I think comparing it to the other GT200 cars, I think that the yellow one, the, the one that I drive now, is it's gonna be fairly competitive. Ako mismo, I have to shed off mga 30 pounds. <laughs> then maybe, oh, it's more of the seating position and like pedal trying to, yeah, pedal placement, trying to get the right handling, maybe try new setups for the car, but just basically that. All three team Big Chill Young Guns are expected to focus on the GT Championship this year, but will still be racing on other events when possible. Ako, I might join um, a few slalom races. So that's a way for me to get to know the car better as well. So I'll try my best to join slalom again this year. Well, I joined slalom the last week one. And then I might join autocross or super sprint, like just for fun. I guess, because I, I want to bring out the starlet also, but mostly just that. So I'll, I'll be racing with the GAC Endurance team again this year. First of all, we're going to be joining the 4 r Kagitingan Cup in March 28-29. The trio of up-and-coming stars of local motorsports is grateful for the opportunity to be part of Team Big Chill. For this year, we will be using Shell Helix Power and Shell Helix Protect. That's the, that's, it's a new pro product from Shell and um, they'll be sponsoring us for the season. Okay, so we'd like to thank our main sponsor, Shell uh, and Loops Raiders Corporation. So, um, Shell Helix Power, Shell Helix Ultra, Shell Helix Protect. We'd also like to thank Tito Dax of TS Tuning, Tito Ding, our chief mechanic, and the rest of our mechanics for the team, and Team Big Chill as well. And also, lastly, we want to thank MSDP, AAP, and Tito Mark the <laughs>
Welcome back to Motoring Today. Let's now take a look at what's happening in the local auto industry. SMC Asia Car Distributors Corporation, the official importer and distributor of BMW vehicles in the country, has officially launched the first ever BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe in a virtual launch streamed online. The new BMW model is dubbed as the icon of individuality. Across all platforms, we've had close to 260,000 views already as of this morning in uh, the videos. No, So basically, we are able to reach a wider audience with this kind of launch. Of course, on the downside, we are not able to meet the customers personally. Given the times, it's the best that we can do. However, of course, during events, it is always very nice to have a more personal touch with the customer. But given the circumstance, I mean, it's really not possible. So we make the best of it. What we learn from it is that, of course, we want more people to see it next time, no? If we can reach a million views, so why not, no? Right now, yeah, we're at 260. I mean, I was expecting a little bit more, but yeah, next time we have to find better ways to reach a wider audience. That's... Mm -hmm. For me, the biggest thing. The company invited select members of the motoring media in a VIP watch party via Zoom and were joined by SMC President and COO Ramon Ang and BMW Philippines President Spencer Yu. The 2 Series Grand Coupe is really aimed at uh, young and urban professionals who are looking more into the sporty side of things when it comes to design and also performance. So that's the kind of vehicle that they prefer. So that's the market that we are really looking at for the 2 Series Grand Coupe. The new Grand Coupe model is available in the loan variant, the 218i Grand Coupe Sport which has an advanced BMW front-wheel drive architecture, a cutting-edge chassis technology, and innovative systems. According to BMW, the standout characteristic of the four-door coupe is its dynamically stretched silhouette, which is lifted from the classical coupe blueprint. And the highlights of the 2 Series Grand Coupe, of course, the exterior, it has this coupe silhouette. So what we're used to seeing with a uh, coupe is like a two-door. But the, the 2 Series Grand Coupe is uh, the first four-door coupe for BMW. And it has a sloping roof line in the rear. And of course, the highlight is the, the new kidney grill design and the new LED headlights in front. So uh, that's a trademark uh, BMW design in front uh, that's been, of course, adapted to to the current design language that across all the models. Inside, it has a Sensatec upholstery that ensures comfort and durability. Various controls are geared squarely to the driver and are grouped by clusters. The infotainment system, meanwhile, can be accessed through the BMW iDrive wheel or via the touchscreen 8.8-inch central information display. Um, on the interior, we have a good mix of some premium materials. We're looking at Sensatec leather upholstery, plus a lot of you know, soft touch plastics and uh, textured material on the inside. So you also have sport seats, sport steering wheel. So it's really towards like a, a driving experience and at the same time, um, giving off the vibe that it's still like every other BMW in terms of quality and fit and finish. Powering the coupe is a 1.5 liter BMW twin power turbo three cylinder in gasoline paired with a seven speed dual clutch Steptronic automatic transmission capable of producing 140 horsepower and 220 Newton meters of torque. The BMW 218i Grand Coupe Sport is available in four colors, Alpine white, mineral gray, Melbourne red, and black sapphire. Priced at 2,990,000 pesos, the first ever BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe also comes with a 5-year or 200,000 kilometer manufacturer's warranty. While these are very uh, challenging times, we would still be uh, very pleased to welcome our customers across our six dealerships nationwide. Uh, we have three dealerships in the metro and uh, three also in the provincial areas. Uh, one in Pampanga, one in Bacolod, and one in Cebu. So these uh, dealerships have already put in place some protocols that will uh, allow our customers to feel safe and secure while the pandemic is still out there. 
So you can see and test drive the two series Grand Coupe for yourself across these facilities and uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Toyota Motor Philippines has partnered with the Department of Health in addressing the mobility needs of healthcare workers in the country. In line with this, Toyota has donated 30 Vios units to public hospitals in Metro Manila and in Laguna. The Vios model is the company's entry into the government's Comprehensive Automotive Resurgence Strategy, or CARS program, where units are being assembled in Toyota's manufacturing plant in Laguna. During the signing, of the Memorandum of Agreement, Toyota Motor Philippines President Atsuhiro Okamoto sends his salutation to all healthcare workers who are at the forefront of the COVID-19 pandemic. Moreover, the company's chairman, Mr. Alfred T, assures Toyota's role in assisting the country during these times and helping us Filipinos rebuild our lives. Culminating the event was the actual turnover of one VOS unit each to Jose R. Reyes Memorial Medical Center, San Lazaro Hospital, and San Lorenzo Ruiz Women's Hospital. The turnover of units to identified public hospitals will be completed by July 2020. Ford Philippines expands its truck portfolio in the country with the unveiling of the F-150 pickup truck, the second vehicle that the company has launched online. We have gathered for the virtual launch of an iconic product that sets the standards for tough pickup trucks and reinforces Ford's position as having the largest lineup of trucks in the Philippines. A part of Ford's F-Series, the company bannered the F-150's dominance as it is hailed as America's best-selling truck for the 43rd straight year and America's best-selling vehicle for the 38th straight year. The specs that it offers is up there and at the price that we offer it makes that package really strong which has the consumer really go for it. F-150 brand is very strong in America. And slowly, we are bringing it to the export markets again for Philippines. We've sold this before, back in 1998, and it's back right now for us. So given that strong F-150 brand really gives us that confidence that we can sell this again here in the Philippines. With this, Ford Philippines Managing Director P.K. Umashankar shared that this pickup is packed with features and capabilities that have made it the truck of choice across America and the world. These include its powerful performance, tough look but premium feel, and the smart and safety features. Under the hood of the F-150 is Ford's 3.5-liter V6 Echo Boost engine with auto start-stop technology capable of producing 380 PS of power and 637 newton meters of torque. This is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission with select shift. On the safety front, the F-150 comes equipped with a Ford Co-Pilot 360, the brand's safety suite as well as other driver assist technologies and convenience features. Ford Copilot 360 is a safety suite of technologies that we have. So for example, it comes with um, autonomous emergency braking, okay, with pedestrian um, detection. And you also have Bliss working for you, which is the blind spot detection. And then you also have the auto headlamps. So by the way, these come with um, LED headlamps. Ford Philippines is offering two variants of the F-150 in all its dealerships nationwide, namely the F-150 4x2 Lariat Super Crew Automatic, priced at 2,698,000 pesos, and the F-150 4x4 Platinum Super Crew Automatic, with a retail price of 2,998,000 pesos. They both feature loader and are very similar. The vehicles have same engine, same transmission, same suspension and a great ride. If you are an adventurous, sporty kind of guy, 4x2 Lariat is a perfect one for you. If you are an off-road kind of guy, you definitely want the hardcore 4x4 capabilities of the Platinum.
after offering its roster of light commercial vehicles online via Laz Mall in Lazada, Philippines. Maxis Philippines now also gives big discounts and special financing schemes on its vehicles. For the Maxxis G10 1.9 Automatic, a 50,000 peso discount for a net price of 1,740,000 pesos or an all-in low down payment of 108,000 pesos are being offered. Maxxis Philippines 13-seater van, the V80 Comfort, is available with a 40,000 peso discount for a net price of 1,530,000 pesos or with a 98,000 peso all-in down payment. For the T60 pickup, the company's latest offering in the market, a 50,000 peso discount is available in all its variants. Hence, the following prices. T60 4x4 automatic, 1,278,000 pesos. T60 4x2 automatic, 1,028,000 pesos. And T60 4x2 manual, 948,000 pesos. Interested customers of the manual variant can also choose an all-in down payment of 40,000 pesos. These cash discounts and financing offers are effective only up to July 31, 2020. Hino Motors Philippines the exclusive distributor of Hino trucks and buses in the country, has officially launched the newest addition to its 500 series of medium-duty trucks, the all-new Hino FL10 Wheeler, streamed on Facebook and marks as the company's first virtual launch. For us at Hino, we continue to be committed to delivering the promise of being a reliable partner in the new normal. And so, today, we are glad to announce our latest offering, the all-new Hino 500 series FL 10 Huira truck. According to HMP, the all-new truck model is designed to provide total support, which sets a new standard for medium-duty trucks in the country. It has an improved safety and comfort features, superior reliability, and optimum fuel economy, which will cater to the various trucking and logistic needs of Filipinos nationwide. New Hino FL is best suited for 32 feet wing van cargo operation. With this, we are focused on maximizing cargo loading and fuel efficiency, enhance operational safety, and provide driving ease and comfort. It is superior as it has the longest operational oil base in its class. With the launch of this Hino truck, the company aims to partner with more businesses and establishments and support more Filipinos, assuring a reduced total running cost and downtime and maximizing lifetime value. HMP Chairman Vicente T. Mills Jr. said that the company remains as committed and solid business partner that continuously innovates and adapts to the changing needs of its customers. The all-new Hino FL truck is available in all Hino 3S dealerships nationwide at the starting price of 3,775,000 pesos for a 32-feet body. Motor Today now brings you our Car of the Week on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Shortly after its debut in the Philippines, the Volkswagen Lamando comes in with additional features and details. What's new with the well-loved sedan? Find out here on Showcase.
that was all about the 2019 Volkswagen Lamando Comfort Line. Its tough yet friendly features make it a sought-after sedan. Our featured vehicle on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program. 100% worry-free driving. Be part of the 2020-2021 Autofocus People's Choice Awards, the only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on, then vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2020-2021 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2020. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose, you decide. Vote now. What do we go for? We go for experience. We go for excitement. We go for sport. We go for style. We go for fun. We go for the new Toyota WeGo. We now have our segment that dwells on the wide array of motoring problems not only in the metro, but all over the country as well. This is where we present problems referred to us, or we ourselves see and hope to fully find solutions for. Here's our public service segment, brought to you by Honda Cars Philippe. In our past episodes, we've talked about cyclists and bicycle lane-related topics. Last week, our topic of concern are motorcycle riders using the exclusive bicycle lane, pointing out how motorcycle delivery riders are blocking the lane in Pasig City located along Julia Vargas Avenue near Shell Gas Station. We've tried reaching the local government of Pasig through Pasig Transport for their reaction regarding this matter, but their team hasn't replied to us yet. Through some research, we found out that their local government has started an online campaign on how citizens can report bicycle lane violations using hashtag PassingBikeLates. Violations that will range from obstructions to damaging of barriers can be reported using the said hashtag. In this way, the local government can monitor and maintain bicycle lanes for cyclists, light, electric vehicle, and other personal mobility devices users. Having said this, motorcycle riders are still not included. We will still try to get the Pasig City local government's reaction on those delivery riders blocking the exclusive and dedicated bicycle lane in the city. That's our public service segment from Honda Cars Philippines. And should you yourself encounter motoring problems that need immediate attention, please feel free to contact us. See the details being flashed on the screen. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. If you missed some portions of our show today or any of the past episodes of Motoring Today, you can watch us online on motoringtoday.ph anytime today at your convenience. Also, don't forget to check us out on our social media accounts. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 34th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety, please continue to be safe at all times. 
On behalf of Butch Gamboa, our dad, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy morning! morning.